The following presentation is available in 4K. In this video, we'll take a closer look at one of the At Games Legends 4K P's from Pinball Expo. We'll discuss and demonstrate the SSF kit accessory that's pre-installed on this machine, which allows you to hear the sounds of the ball rolling on the table, deeper bass audio, and provides a more immersive experience. We'll also take a look at some of the gameplay from various tables you may not have seen, and while we're at it, we'll see if the arcade control panel that you may already own will work on the Legends 4KP. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Pinball Expo 23 was a great time. I met a lot of awesome people and spent a lot of time playing machines that I've never played before. I've always been drawn to and love playing pinball even though I've never owned a real physical machine. I want to express a huge thank you to Act Games for sending this unit over for all of us to check out before they move into mass production. This is the Adams Family Standard Edition cabinet and is not a limited edition and should always be available for purchase. There are additional Collector's Edition Pinball Machines, or CEPs, that are coming very soon and may be announced or even available at the time you're watching this video. CEPs will be limited to 5,000 units each, so if the Adams Family is not the artwork you had in mind, more options are coming from Ad Games and Zen Studios. As you may already know, the back glass is a large 23.8-inch display, includes an 8-inch DMD, and a 32-inch 4K playfield. The front apron simply has a D-pad for navigating the menus, and you can of course replace this with an arcade control panel, which I prefer, and I'll show you how to install it later in this video. The front of the machine has LED-lit coin slots. Coins can be inserted into the slots and falls into the coin return. It doesn't register a credit nor start a game, but still a cool addition to the machine. On the right, below the plunger, is a unique builder's plate. Some have expressed concerns about the location and its relation to the coin door, but it all comes down to personal preferences, and it's up to you. On the right side of the cabinet, you'll find Morticia and Gomez, along with the Adams Family logo with Thing. Moving up the back box, we have Wednesday and Pugsley holding a lightning rod. And of course, up at the very top, we see the Zen Studios logo. The power switch is located at the bottom on the front right side. And if we move towards the middle, we'll find the bass shaker speaker, which was pre-installed for the SSF kit to demonstrate at the show. However, it's actually an optional accessory, and we'll discuss this in more detail in a few moments. Here's a front view comparison of the Legends Pinball HD on the left and the 4KP on the right. The 4KP stands a bit taller and the bottom of the cabinet is still just a little lower than that on the ALP HD. I want to make you aware if you visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash ALP 4K, it'll take you to the start of the Legends Pinball 4K guide. This guide is a start to the content for the Legends 4K, and it will be evolving quite a bit as new sections are created. It already covers quite a bit of information, and I hope you'll find it helpful and informative. In the next segment, we'll discuss the SSF settings and a demonstration. Since the EVT series had concluded, there were some additional settings that have either changed, have been added, or need further discussion. One of those settings is the pinball game settings, which has the setting for the accelerometer sensitivity. The accelerometer provides the ability to physically move or shake the machine to make the ball move, just like you would on a physical pinball machine. As you might expect, with the added vibration from the SSF kit and the solenoids, false positives can occur. When I asked at Games about this, they cautioned that there will never be a perfect solution for this complicated system with mutually interfering parts at work. Some interference and misfire may be inevitable. For much of the video that I will be showing, I will have the accelerometer set to zero, and I wanted to clarify that. In the EVT series, I mentioned that there was no way for me to adjust the strength of the solenoids. That is no longer the case, as now the solenoids are software controlled. Within the haptic feedback setting, 
You can enable or disable the solenoids in the menu, as well as set the strength and check it out within the menu. The settings are weak, moderate, strong, or disabled. I'll go ahead and go through a few of the settings here so you can see how it sounds. Another new setting was the SSF settings. Here you can set the sound mode to SSF or stereo, depending on if you have the kit installed or not. The subwoofer on the bottom of the machine can also be set to disabled, weak, moderate, or strong, depending on your preference. I typically leave it set for strong, as I'm all about the bass. Within the health check setting, a new option was added that is very useful for testing the speakers. This test will play audio through each of the seven speakers as well as the front haptic speakers. The only real way for you to experience SSF is if you see it for yourself. As most will be watching this with only two stereo speakers, you won't get the full effect during gameplay. That is, you aren't going to hear what I hear. But let's listen in on this demo to help give you an idea. On the left front speaker, this is my voice on the left hand side. This is my voice on the left side speaker. This is my voice on the left hand side. This is my voice on the left rear speaker. This is my voice on the left hand side. This is my voice on the right front speaker. This is my voice on the right hand side. This is my voice on the right side speaker. This is my voice on the right hand side. This is my voice on the right rear speaker. This is my voice on the right hand side. This is my voice coming from the left and right front speaker. This is my voice in the center. My voice would be out of phase on three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My voice is out of phase. I tried a number of ways to record the audio for the SSF kit, including Dolby Atmos, using an omnidirectional microphone mounted to my camera, as well as two wireless microphones mounted to each side of the cabinet. None of these options worked out quite how I hoped. So instead, I'm going to show an animation that will give you a basic idea of where the sound is coming from. Keep in mind, everything from the speakers being highlighted to the left and right audio channels changing was manipulated by me in an effort to show you what I'm hearing. Here goes. <laughs> Next we'll take a look at some gameplay in 4K with the back glass for a few additional tables available on this machine. At this point I'd like to show some gameplay with the back glass and the DMD displays visible. Throughout the gameplay segment SSF was turned on, the solenoids set to strong, and the accelerometer sensitivity set to off. I'll play a few seconds of a few tables so you can see how it looks and hear how it sounds.
Now we'll finally get to answer the question, will your existing arcade control panel work on the Legends 4KP? One thing I wanted to demonstrate and test in this video is replacing the stock panel with the arcade control panel. To do that, power off the machine and unplug the power at the back. Then remove all five screws on the sidebar, three on the front bar. Then you can remove the two bars and do the same for the five screws on the opposite side of the cabinet. Then you can remove the last remaining bar. There are four screws on the top of the stock panel that need to be removed. Then gently lift up on the panel and there are two connectors to disconnect. The gray data cable going to the D-pad and gently pinch and disconnect the red and black power cable going to the front exciters. The USB cable was secured with a cable tie, so I'll go ahead and clip the cable tie. This is an early version of the arcade control panel. You can tell because it doesn't have any screw holes on the left and right. It's not a problem for the installation, and more recent control panels do have four holes pre-drilled. At this point, just plug in the USB cable to the bottom of the control panel, then set the control panel to the side, and connect the two red and black wires together. These are used for the front exciters. And the gray cable you can just tuck away as we won't be using it. Now position the control panel to the apron area. And one thing I like to do is use this screen cleaner before I reapply the bars. Then simply reinstall each of the left and right sidebars and screws into each bar. And lastly, the front lockdown bar and three screws. And we're basically done. Just plug in the power and turn on the machine. And now we can navigate the menus or play arcade games from the arcade control panel. I much prefer the arcade control panel over the D-pad. It just makes the navigation much easier. A few have asked for some more pictures of the front inside of the cabinet. And while we had the control panel removed, well, here's a closer look. I want to thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or what you might like to see next. I should be receiving a new build of the Adams Family to demonstrate some enhancements being made. When that happens, I'll keep you updated here on the channel. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider it. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.